Rusty Quill Presents Chapter and Multiverse Welcome back, my friend. It's a pleasure to see you, as always. Oh, I hadn't finished telling you about those wizards yet, had I? Don't worry. I'd be delighted to round off the story for you today. I left things on quite a cliffhanger last time, didn't I? Our heroes had to contend with swarms of vicious rabbits in the third testing room. An illusory outdoor scene? And their new serpentine ally was in a whole heap of trouble. Hello and welcome back to Chapter and Multiverse, the actual play podcast where we explore the same city across multiple parallel universes. I am your game master, Maddie Searle. My pronouns are she, her. And today we will be playing Definitely Wizards by Elliot H.T., in which a bunch of non-wizards have to try and pass a wizard exam. But before we go any further, I must introduce our wonderful and talented players, starting with Blurry. Hello, I am Lori, she, her, and I am playing Falsetto Delala, the wonderful, actually, no, very depressed, (laughs) very depressed bard, full on black hair, long fringe, eyeliner, flannels, as someone suggested earlier, he, him. Wonderful. (laughs) And Pip. Hello, uh, I'm Pip Gladwin, and I will be playing Jackson Gaines, the muscle wizard, both he, him. Sweet. And Shamini. Hi, I am Shamini. I use mostly she, her pronouns, and I am playing Estelia, the druid, who also uses she, her pronouns. Great. And Connie. Hey, everyone. Connie here. Uh, my pronouns are they, he, and she. I am playing Spoon, he, they, teenage collector, and currently has been blown up. <laughs> Just a little bit. A little bit blown up. <laughs> Smidge. So, absolutely. Last we left off, uh, everyone was in a bit of a slough of despond mm. as... Poor falsetto's inspirational screeches did not have the desired effect, and the hammers that Spoon had so handily brought forth from their cloak just exploded in people's hands. And so the rabbits that were emerging from the ground in this testing room were covering our newfound friend Bryony the snake, and things are looking dire. So what do you want to do? Am I right in thinking that both Spoon and Falsetto are just sort of collapsed on the floor, being tragic? Ah, (laughs) So tragic. You've never seen such a tragic sight in your life. I think Spoon is physically maimed more so than Falsetto is emotionally maimed. (laughs) I think Jackson has done that full sort of Hanna-Barbera cartoon thing where he was holding the hammer and then the hammer exploded and you couldn't see him. And when the smoke cleared, he's standing in exactly the same position. (laughs) But like his hair has been blown backwards, he's, you know, his eyebrows have gone. Um, uh, cool. I'm gonna react because because Bryony, the snake is the giant muscular snake is in trouble, and you know, game recognizes game. So <laughs> Jackson is gonna like stare at his partially singed hand, just be like, I don't, I don't need a hammer. I am the hammer uh, and I will just I will hurl myself at the massive rabbits yeah. and just and just start kicking the, the, the uh, kicking the non expletive word out of them um, kicking the daylights out of yeah, them yeah I can't I, I truly could not think of a different word that's that's my whole plan and I think at this moment just given the situation I don't think I'm trying to make this look like it's magic I'm yeah. just I'm just beating the hell out of a bunch of rabbits. Yeah, priorities. Right, fair. Please give me a wild roll. Okay. It's a four, which meets my current wild stat. Oh, whew. Amazing. Yes, so you can add one to wild and succeed if you're not disguising it. No, I don't think I am. I will say that with that success, you can absolutely tear through these rabbits, absolutely flinging them to the side and manage to excavate this poor snake from the mountain of rabbits. 
Um, there are still plenty of rabbits around, scurrying around your feet, nibbling at your ankles, but Bryony is now free. Stelia is still half ferret, half person. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> With very small limbs. <laughs> so I, what I think what I'd like to do, tell me what you think of the vibes of this GM, is I'd like to start rolling. So from from lying prone on the floor, start rolling and kind of like some, I don't know how she's rolling with her tiny limbs, but she's pushing off, build up speed. And I would like to once again try and transform myself. But this time I would like to transform myself into a Tasmanian devil, but the cartoon kind, not the real kind. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> They're just a sort of little tornado for some reason. Very yeah. unlike the biologically accurate species. I will say that, yes, there have been very cartoony things <laughs> happening in this <laughs> series already, so you can absolutely do that. Please give me a wild roll. Um, I don't know how I'm going to... I'm just not going to try and disguise this either. <laughs> yeah, let's have come off. Um, one. Nice. Ooh-hoo. Yeah. So, um, yeah, add one to wild if you're not disguising it, and it is, is it successful? So what, what are you trying to achieve with your newfound Tasmanian for? I, w- I, w- I would like you to see the, the little whirlwind and then just the rabbits just flying, like, everywhere it goes. It's just being flung aside, just rabbits everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. You managed to, like, clear a path <laughs> through the sea of rabbits to the door at the other side but as you're doing so uh, the second hidden part of the room comes to life the the trees uh, I mentioned a few fake trees um, that were decorating this room but unfortunately these trees are also sentient and their branches come and try and grapple you I mean, I kind of love it because the city's really into trees. (laughs) I'm going to, yeah, I'm I'm letting them give me a lovely big hug. Slash. Oh, no. I don't know how this goes. Yeah, the the trees aren't particularly, uh, they're they're not going to try and injure you in any way. They're just going to hold you in place so you can't leave. And so they're just giving you a lovely, lovely big hug. Oh. And you're just like, oh, this is great. This, this is okay. Yeah. I think at this point, Spoon sits up and we see that the explosion has completely blown off both their hat <gasps> and their beard. No! So, oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Revealing the cursed hat underneath, which I think is a newsboy oh, cap, no. um, but it has teeth. <laughs> oh. It has like really blunt teeth gnawing onto their forehead. And oh. we see that Spoon's faces, like they look like a 17 year old kid, maybe like a month on testosterone, right? Like they've got like little <laughs> freckles and like kind of like flyaway red bits of hair underneath like the teeth and like these like bright, like black eyes. They sit up, they don't realize their disguise has been blown. And they go, Auntie Estelia, I'll help you, I'll redeem myself. They pick themselves up and they're gonna like fling a finger forward to cast Singe, which is a wizard spell produce a small flame like a built-in lighter. I think what happens is they press it against one of the barks, but nothing happens. And they go, oh, oh, right, of course, yes, I need some gasoline. And they reach into their (gasps) pocket and they try to (laughs) douse the trees. This is not a magical gas. It's just regular oil. They're just dousing the trees in oil and then try to touch singe to the trees. Incredible. I love it. Please give me a wizard roll. Yes, yes. (laughs) Uh, It is a I keep rolling sixes. It is a six. No. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, no. I'm going to say I haven't used it yet, and I think I really like this idea, so I'm going to give you inspiration and let you roll again for the wit bonus. <laughs> when the GM's like, Connie, please roll better. Uh, <laughs> that is a five, which works because my wizard stat is a five. Hey. Excellent. Oh. Amazing. So, yeah, absolutely. You're just dousing these trees, these sentient trees in oil, and as you touch your finger to it, they just set a light and... Luckily, as they burst into flames, they kind of flinch back and let Estelia go so that Estelia does not catch on fire as well. It's a close run thing, but it is absolutely a success. (laughs) Oh, uh, if you're at a five, you add one to wizards, so now you can't cast any more wizard spells until you've succeeded at a wild roll. Yep. Um, Falsetto's gonna just like morosely walk up to Spoon and just like, you know, like put their hand heavily on their face no. and like drag it down. Just, you know, not h- hard or anything, just being like, um, uh, the arsonist with the trees has brought me from my knees. And just like, 
and trying to wander towards the door in almost like a fugue state. <laughs> so depressed. Jeez. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> yeah. um, the, the rabbits who were flung aside by the Tasmanian whirlwind are slowly starting to get back on their feet and Aww. starting to c- crawl back. But if you're quick, you can get through the door before they are fully back to full strength. I think Estelia's going to turn back into her normal form as she drops onto the ground and then just, like, looks at a, a, a Spoon standing there <laughs> with this various collection of things and just be like, oh, you have saved me. You are the greatest wizard <laughs> ever. Look at the orb again, pointing at Spoon. <laughs> grabs Spoon's hand and, like, runs for the, for the door, if you'll allow. Absolutely. <laughs> you can hear the sound of a quill scratching from the orb and just go, hmm, yes, interesting, good, hmm, very good. <laughs> and you, you don't know, you don't know what, what he's writing. Could be anything. <laughs> and so, yes, absolutely, you make your way towards the final door and mm. it doesn't have a number ro- written on it it just has the words the final test <gasps> and so as you open the door it is pitch black in this room you cannot see a single thing and then suddenly poof, 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 <gasps> three spotlights go on shining down on three giant automatons three giant stone automatons They've got these massive, chunky cogs and wheels mm. making them work, and they're just standing still at the moment. And you can see that around each of their necks is uh, three pieces of metal. And those of you with um, enhanced spatial reasoning can figure <laughs> out that they, these three pieces fit together to make a key. And there is, in fact, a door at the other end of the room that has also been lit by a spotlight. And it appears that your task is to retrieve the pieces of the key from each of these automatons and open the final door. This test center has really good lighting. We should talk to whoever does the set design because this is some nice work. It's actually very impressive. Yeah, yeah. Falsetto, maybe you could rent this place out to perform. That's such a good idea. You're just saying that to make me feel better. Like No, I mean it. Like the rhyme you did right before we went through the final door was was really amazing. And I, I like the eyeliner, I suppose, and the fringe and the burnt cape, but I also really liked old falsetto. Well, you know, maybe it's something to think about if I, you know, I, I was actually thinking, Estelia, I don't know how you feel about set design, but like, you know, I haven't filled that position yet for the tour, so Me? I was thinking we could have like a nature forest yes. vibe. And yes. Jackson, I've been meaning to ask you, like, you really like lifting things. Yeah. It's basically like my whole deal. It's like, I don't know, maybe <laughs> we could do with some kind of roadie. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously, Spoon, you're the SFX. Oh. Oh, I, I was hoping I could maybe be, I don't know, like a manager or some sort of lead. <laughs> uh, falsetto cups your face. Oh. It doesn't say anything <laughs> and just walks off. <laughs> wait, wait uh, Uncle Falsetto, let, let me prove myself. If, if you're impressed by my performance in this final room, will you make me your manager instead of the sound effects person? I don't want to be fully work again. <laughs> you know, life, life is but a test. What can we do but show our best? Falsetto, yeah. you're back. You've got it back. You've got your spark. God, I hate falsetto uh, so much. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I suppose that's kind of walked where Jackson's gonna gonna say. Ah, uh, I mean, he seems real, real upset about this. I know it's maybe like a a new phase for him, but. Uh, I think I think we need I think we need the old falsetto back, guys. You know. Okay, so like we got to think something positive, uh, happiness. I mean, the new music is really nice, though. It's a little dirgy. It makes me feel kind of depressed. Like I just want to lie yeah. down in a ditch and die. Yeah. Okay. 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 We need a serious intervention. I think falsetto. Falsettos on their knees, like in front of an automaton with the spotlight on them, (laughs) just declaring, what is the human race if not cogs to be kept in place? 
Oh, oh God. Man. Okay, that's bad. Oh, boy. Uh, well, the old falsetto loved flattery, loved yeah. compliments. Maybe Rice. that's how we do it? For yeah. sure. Yeah. Falsetto. I think we, we go and stand around them in a, in a circle. Yeah, in like a semicircle. <laughs> <laughs> Standing in the right place. Yeah. They've got the lighting coming off. We're kind of like evenly spaced, like maybe like maybe kneeling yeah mm, kneeling yeah. i think a very mm. helpful spotlight just falls on you as well yeah. Yeah. just absolutely setting the scene we're gonna get the breeze breeze back again so that like we've got again the the, the falsetto's hair and cloak starts going and i think as we're all talking i'm gonna summon <laughs> summon some bees <laughs> the, bees are not, the bees are backing music okay oh, so yes. this low hum that's just gonna build as we're like giving the compliments mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay we love it okay falsetto you are the most amazing performer the power of your words no. are greater than the power of nature it's like the power of the sun and the river and fire all together Bursting no, out of you, it's stop. amazing. Come on, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm gonna give up music. Uh, falsetto, you, you can't do that. I guess it's my turn. Um, falsetto. Ever since we met at that night school, that I'm pretty sure was just a multi-level marketing front a scam. <laughs> you showed me how beautiful magic could be because up until that point my only exposure to magic was stealing magical items i thought it was power to be pilfered and 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 traded not embraced and used as art more than that falsetto you're you're our leader and you're my friend i i'm an orphan i grew up in the streets and i think uh spoon launches into like a horrifically tragic (laughs) backstory like (laughs) they've never brought up before about how their like parents were killed by like Korgal the conqueror or something like it was it's horrific (laughs) and like they route, route it back but you give me hope in humanity again with the music you used to make you're like the older uncle brother i never had so please come back to us. The magic was always in you, Spoon. Us with the friends we made along the way or something. I don't know. <laughs> Steely's just going to add, also, it was in the books that we read when we were training to be wizards, which we are. But <laughs> <laughs> suddenly just throw some glitter in the air. <laughs> <laughs> magic. Jackson, Jackson. We yeah, yeah, you. yeah. Uh, uh. Okay, okay, we're get, we're getting there. We got glitter. We're getting there. Okay, okay. I'll lean in close and whisper. Uh, falsetto, man. I'm gonna tell you something that I, I I've never told anybody else. Yes. I'm not a real wizard. <laughs> I can't do magic. I'm just, I'm just jacked, bro. (laughs) And you, and you, today, more than any of the rest of us, you've been shooting spells, man. You're a real wizard. So snap out of it, man. We need our leader back. Falsetto's gonna, like, hand grips your bulging shoulder muscle forehead to fall they're like they're like to the ears <laughs> they're just so big it's it's scary and awful the buzzing is like forming a note now as well and i'm just going to start chanting in the background of, of your upcoming speech falsetto falsetto do you know what jackson you have trusted me with some information that is really important Oh my god, I'm not gonna let you down! Yay! <laughs> <Falsetto>! <laughs> Let's assemble <laughs> these keys! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! we, we all just sprint off in different directions. <laughs> 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 and as soon as you start sprinting off in different directions, the, the automaton sense movement can spring to life and bear down upon you with their massive fists. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. So, what Oof. do you want to do about that? I mean, Falsetto is amped up and is going to cast shield on everyone. Yes! Yes! Oh, amazing. Nice. Please give me a wizard roll. Uh-oh. Oh, no. 
That's a six. Oh, no. <laughs> Come on, have you no sense of story, dice? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say with uh, with um, with Falsetto's newfound sense of joy again, can roll again. Yeah. With, okay, with come, the, on, uh, come on, come on. You can have come a whip bonus. On. Come on this time. Yeah, it's another six. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Sometimes, sometimes the dice tell a story. Yeah, <laughs> they do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so okay. please roll again for the consequences of your okay. actions. Oh boy. One more six. One more six. <laughs> One more. It was a two. Oh, well, that's <laughs> nothing no. happens. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> nothing happens. So yeah, you don't need to add one to your wild, but yeah, unfortunately, the shield, you, you see it flicker. There's this blue light that shimmers around everyone for about half a second, and then it just <laughs> just oh. dies. Well, we don't need wizard magic. Let's let <gasps> loose, everyone. Screw the rules. Let's be ourselves. No, we'll like straight up fail if we do that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. I, I grab, I'm like dodging between the hammer fists. I grab a cloth, just a regular cloth, not magical, a black cloth out of my, my pocket and I throw it over the orb so it can't see what's going to happen next. Yes! Yes! Oh my God, Smooth, yes! That's, that's an object interaction. That's, yeah, that's not a roll. That happens. <laughs> and the, you just hear a muffled voice from uh. under the orb like, oh, oh, it's, um, uh, the, my my feet seem to not be working. Excuse me. Let me just let me just shut down the shut down the or BS. Uh, shutting down or BS. Let me shut down or BS and start uh, again. The... Delightful. Uh, amazing. Turn it off and turn it on again. I'll be right back. And so now you have the time oh while the gosh. while the orb is off. Right. It just yeah. It just falls to the ground as it's turned off. Oh. Uh, and so you know that the proctor is back when the orb starts floating again. <laughs> Great. Jackson, punch them! <laughs> <laughs> sure. That's that's what I do. <laughs> is, there, is, is there literally nothing else in this room? Just these three just these three machines. Yeah, it is an absolute void. You're not even sure where the room begins and ends because it's just so dark apart from these spotlights that are tracking these automatons very well. <laughs> of course. Nice. So of there's course. probably very someone nice. up there doing some very great lighting work. I am gonna. I will unsling my. Although that's a again, that's a wizard roll. <laughs> I might as well max out my wild stat. Or <laughs> let's do it. I, I think I'm just gonna tackle one of the legs <laughs> of one of these things. I wanna because obviously the the necklace that we need is up top, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I wanna I wanna get this thing horizontal so that we can get so that the others can get to it easier. So I think I just run full tilt like a train at one of its ankles. And <laughs> I'm just in intending to, to knock it over, try and knock it off balance. And as I run at it, I shout, I'm not casting a spell! <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, please give me a wild roll. That's a three. I have five in Woo! wild right now, so that is a success. Amazing. Yep, success. Absolutely. So you will add one to wild. I will. I'm not, I'm not disguising it at <laughs> yep. all. You add one to wild, so you're at six. Yep. Uh, so you can't cast another wild spell. You have to cast a wizard spell next uh -oh. and succeed in order to cast wild. If you cast another wild spell and your wild stat goes higher than six, then you're caught and you fail the test. Yep. So, yep. yeah, you definitely have to cast a wither spell next and succeed if you want to keep this going. No doke. And so, yes, please describe to me how you level one of these automatons. These, like, these <laughs> towering automatons, probably like three times the size of you. As I, as I described, I think, I charge at it, screaming, and I drop my shoulder just before I and just slam into <laughs> into its into its ankle and, like, knock it off balance and hopefully tip it over. Yeah, and you hear a deep voice going, oh. <laughs> As it is, just start, slowly starts to tip over, and then it's like a tree falling in a forest. It eventually manages to slam down on the ground. The whole floor shakes with its force, and and you are able to snatch the key from around its neck. Uh, but there are still two left who are bearing down upon you with their terrible, terrible fists. And at this point. I think it is time to take a short break, and we'll be right back. 
Hi folks, Lydia here from Rusty Quill Gaming, Chapter and Multiverse, Magnus Archives, and a bunch of other RQ shows. I'm excited to tell you that UK gaming dice company The Dice Dungeon have teamed up with Rusty Quill to produce two exclusive limited edition dice sets inspired by our award-winning podcast Rusty Quill Gaming. The We're Still Working on the Name dice are a set of seven custom polyhedral dice featuring icons representing the player characters from Rusty Quill Gaming. They will come with a custom presentation tin. And the Lolomg Deluxe dice set are a set of seven custom resin-filled metal polyhedral dice featuring icons representing the player characters from Rusty Quill Gaming presented in a wooden collection box. This set will feature other exclusive, exciting extras yet to be revealed. Find each dice set and a bundle collecting both sets at the dicedungeon.co.uk forward slash collections forward slash rusty dash quill. Or click the link in the description of this episode. And we're back. So with one of the automatons down, two left. What are we doing? Who is going to try and fell the next one? Well, having seen uh, Jackson Gaines' uh, incredible tactics, Steenie is going to try... Um, a similar manoeuvre, but using the power of bees! <laughs> <laughs> she does a dramatic yes. bee hand, waves her hand up at the swarm of bees that were previously helping to provide background music for an emotional moment, and now swarm around the automaton's head, round and round, spinning them about, knocking their head back, and then another another branch of the swarm under their feet. So as, as they step back, trying to regain their balance, they maybe trip. They Amazing. Might I need this to succeed. <laughs> Wild roll for me, please. One. Yo. Oh. Uh, nice. I assume you're not trying to disguise it. The proctor is not watching, but I'm not I... trying to disguise it. But that does put my wild up to six. So <gasps> that's where that is. I think I'm going to have to be harsh and say that the. The stats still do go up, even if the proctor's not oh, yeah. watching. No, it makes yeah, totally. sense. Yeah, it makes sense. sense. Yeah. Please describe to me how these bees managed to fell this giant. One of them, the swarm of bees around its head, and another swarm tripping it up at its feet as it comes crashing down, surrounded by bees. But all of the bees get out of the way before it hits the ground. None of them get squashed. They're all fine. Bryony is just like wrapped around my neck, just like watching, like, oh, good bee work. Um, and Edward's just hanging out of my hair, just waking up from a nap, just like maybe he's missed a few things, but is, you know, having a nice day. Eating some cake crumbs that are yeah. still in your hair. Yeah. <laughs> just having a little sleep again. Oh, again. sleep again, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. And you managed to grab necklace number two from this felled giant. And there is one left. Um, as the two that you have dropped start to slowly try and push themselves back up, you have your chance to get at the third one without any hindrance. So who's going to go for it? Spoon steps forward right after putting the curtain on the orb, turns around, sees this final automaton. They're going to reach up to their cursed hat. They're (gasps) going to say, all right, it's time to break the curse. And the only way possible is to tell it to destroy everything. And they rip the hat (laughs) off of their head and slam it onto the ground where a poof of smoke erupts and... I think if it works, uh, a armored land shark is gonna appear. Like it's a shark, but it has feet and legs and like a massive chomping teeth. So I will roll for wild if that's okay. amazing. Yeah, I'm just gonna that. just gonna say it now. I'm petitioning for a spoon prequel. Yes, um, we need to understand. I want that. Yeah, just yeah. I just want it on record. Yeah, and please, please roll with advantage. I want, I want a land shark, please. <laughs> okay, well, one was a two, one was a four. I was at five. I go up to six. So I think three of us are at six now. Amazing. Yeah. I, so, think, I think that's danger zone, right? Isn't doesn't that bad thing happen if we all go to six? I'm on yeah. four. You're on four. Okay. So yeah. Falsetto is hopefully gonna save us. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> okay, absolutely. So, how does this land shark manifest and what does it do? It's massive. Like, at first, it's just, poof, it's about the size of a horse. And then, as the spell takes hold, it poof, poof, like becomes like absolutely ginormous. Uh, like, a massive shadow falls over the crumbled remains of the two automatons and, like, it towers over the third one. And it lifts up, like, a clawed, like, paw slash fin and just slams it down on, like, the third automaton and, like, breaks and mortar and stone just go flying everywhere. And the key, the part of the key also flies through the air. Spoon jumps up 
and grabs it and lands back down. Yes! Woo! Incredible. Wait, we better yes. hurry though, because this thing's out of control. <laughs> That's my team! Screams <laughs> falsetto from the background, completely thinking that they helped and did nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> So now your task is to get through the door before the automatons get back up and before the land shark eats you. So how would you like to achieve that? (laughs) Where is the door? The door is probably about um, 40 feet away. Like it's just at our level? Yeah, it's just at your level. It's not high up in the air. It's just an ordinary door. With an inflated self of importance, Falsetto is just going to (laughs) shout, Tim, to the door! (laughs) Yes, leader! (laughs) As Spoon is running, having like landed back down dramatically, I Mm. would like to get the swarm of bees to come up under Spoon's feet and just like lift (gasps) them up so they're basically like surfing up the whole towards the door. (laughs) Yes! I think Jackson is like just staring up at this kaiju that is now in the room <laughs> yeah. with us, um, smashing up these automatons, just kind of staring at open man, just like, bro, what's your routine? <laughs> I gotta know. Falsetto's gonna, as he runs, like grab you by the arm and trying to encourage you. Obviously, can do nothing to pull you. <laughs> it's like trying to pull you. a wall. Yeah. <laughs> if it's okay for me to chime in as the shark real fast, like in Please response do. to Jackson, just goes, Never skip leg day! <laughs> and it stops down. <laughs> does, does it seem like the shark is aggressive towards us also? Or is it just smushing up the automatons? I'll leave that up to the GM. I got I got nothing. I think because the words you used was destroy everything. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, so we passed the exam, but now there's a giant shark monster <laughs> which may destroy the world. Can I grab the orb <laughs> as we go as well? Because we really need to take this Ooh. orb. We do. Yeah. yeah. However, important rules question. If I have to roll again for the bee surfing, I'm going to have to do something drastic in order to, to not have the orb come back and... and because my wild is at six already. Yeah. So I'm going to have to try and use one of my props, presumably to convince the orb. So can I can I pick up the orb and kind of like shake the orb a bit? I want to get that yeah. to back. Um, yeah, the orb starts to light up and starts to float by itself again. And it's like, oh, sorry about that. Um, oh, what's going on here? I feel like running. I'm going to be like, no worries. Uh, and I'm going to take, I'm going to take Edward <laughs> from my hair and I'm going to be like, my wizard familiar <laughs> has helped us defeat these three automatons. Well done, Edward. <laughs> <laughs> can I take that as use of my prop in order to remove one point from wild? <laughs> yes, you can. And so you may roll for bee surfing. <laughs> and then roll. For, and then I'm now I'm going to roll for the bee surfing. Yeah. Okay. The bee surfing is a four. My wild is nice. five. So that's fine. So that works. Great. Uh, and you were disguising it with the familiar, so you don't need to. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> so with all that admin out of the way, absolutely. <laughs> is it is it everyone that's on the on the bee surfing, or is it just Spoon? It's just Spoon. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 that's fair. I just that's fair. Spoon is very inspirational. I'm like Spoon needs to be flying at this point. Spoon Spoon is precious and yep, must be protected yep, at all yep, costs. Yep. And so yes, yeah, Spoon is aloft on a on a surfboard of bees. Everyone else is running. <laughs> straight towards the door trying to avoid the jaws of this giant land shark <laughs> and and as the orb floats behind you you all manage to get through the door and shut it and you hear a massive slam as this land shark just rams against the door and luckily it's a very magical place the land shark is trapped in there they don't want those automatons getting out so mm. yeah land shark is oh. not going to get out either and so you find yourself back in that cold cavernous hall with the stars on the ceiling and uh, there is a kerfuffle coming from inside the orb you hear a door opening and you hear a a voice saying oh uh, what's going on here I I thought I asked you to keep an eye on things while I was away not run tests while I was away (laughs) the other voice the proctor in adverted commas says oh I'm sorry I misunderstood I thought that you were um insinuating that I carry on your duties while you were on holiday. I, I'm terribly sorry, but these very uh, talented young wizards are uh, 
certainly worthy of getting their qualification. Um, I have recorded everything. I have detailed notes. The other voice goes, well, this is most irregular. Um, what do you have to say for yourselves? And a uh, jet of light kind of shoots out, pointing at each of you, gesturing for you to speak up for yourselves. Falsetto, like, again, amped up on the success of, <laughs> of the, their team. Well, hold the ball. You know, like, I want you to think of Aragorn in Lord of the Rings when he's holding the Palandir and he, like, reveals himself to some. Yeah. <laughs> Looking direct into what he assumes is the camera. <laughs> you know, who knows? Who knows? Have you witnessed the destruction that we have wreaked on your petty little test? We are the mightiest wizards of all time! And just, like, throws the ball on the floor to try and <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It, just, it sort of awkwardly clunks and then bounces a little bit and rolls along the floor and then starts floating by itself again. Oh, that was rather... Uh, I'm not sure how to feel about that. I'm, I'm having some feelings and I'm not sure how to process them. Uh, Can I roll wizard to have tried to convince them? Yeah, please do. Us. Oh... It's a four, and I've, my wizard is currently two. Oh! As the test is over, we can just use this as a as a measure of success, and we don't need to go into the whole consequences part. The orb speaks out. I've never seen someone so impudent. A wizard would never be so brash Uh-oh. as that. You, the one with all the muscles, what have you got to say for yourself? What? Um. Well, we passed your tests, and uh, I think that means that you got to give us our wizard licenses because we passed your tests. doesn't matter what, you know, situate. Maybe maybe you had the wrong person given the tests. We don't know that. We just came here at the appointed time. You left this joker in charge, and then we passed the tests because we're wizards, man. Yeah, man! <laughs> we're wizards. <laughs> and then I think for the first time in this entire game, I'm going to try and cast a wizard spell. <gasps> Which one? I'm going to see if I'm successful first. <laughs> <laughs> I think just for the fact of Jackson doing something wizardy, you can have inspiration. and yes. Yes. It's very kind. It's a two and a five. My wizard is at three. Woo-hoo! As he's saying, because we're wizards, man, um, he's going to use uh, a simple illusion to uh, make sort of behind the other three, not himself, just the other three, oh. like a sort of illusory version of each one of them, except they're super jacked as well. <laughs> um <laughs> Like sort of coming up, like 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 sort of looming shadows up behind them, but sort of you know sparkly and translucent and flexing in that in that moment to just punctuate the point. Falsetta throws a handful of glitter in the air, <laughs> <laughs> just instinctively, like yeah. <laughs> incredible. So yeah, the the voice kind of grumbles a bit and is like, "Well, I see that uh, you must have." at least done something to get through those rooms in the first place. And uh, let me just see here. And you hear the rustling of paper as he looks through the other man's notes, just taking taking a few minutes to have a look. Then he, he pauses and says, all right, fine. As long as you don't tell anyone about this whole affair, then of course, um, by the power vested in me as Yandorf the Yellow of the wizard, uh, practitioner center, you shall pass. Oh, <laughs> How did we not see oh this my coming? goodness! Well, thank you so much, Yandor. Yes, it's me, Yandorf the Yellow. I'm very famous. <laughs> All right, I'm now I'm going to unpack my things after my very lovely holiday. Goodbye. <laughs> and Leo just <laughs> scratches on the ground. Wizards! We're, We're wizards! Well! We're definitely yes. wizards! Oh. Mm. How can I express my feelings today? We won, we deserve, we're a family, yay! <laughs> I, I hug everyone at once. No, sorry, sorry. I would like to ask each and every one of you, what, what do you do with your newfound wizard license? And oh. what does the near future look like for your character? Um, I will ask Spoon what, what they're up to. Well, the first thing after Jackson lets us all go from a hug, Spoon's going to turn to Falsetto and go, does that mean I can be your manager? Falsetto, we'll put a hand on your shoulder. Spoon. 
The power was always in you. <laughs> yes, yes, you can be my man. Oh, thank you, thank you so I, much, Mr. Falsetto. You won't regret this. I can think of no one better. Just in case it is relevant to the other characters, what Falsetto's going to do is tour, and there are positions going on this tour. <laughs> Probably like a mix of spoken words and um, no indie, because no that indie. was a dark oh, time. Like right. the indie. We loved the indie. I think we're probably going to have like 80s rock vibe okay. Okay. Yeah. with mm. spoken words sprinkled in uh, just to inspire people and, you know, try and create a bit of good in the world. Or oh, that's what Falsetto likes to think they're doing. <laughs> I think Spoon's like yes. in the backstage area. They're the manager and the stage manager, right? And like, Aww. they're like telling the backup dancers like, you have to pick up your feet more. Mr. Falsetto <laughs> is going to fire you expeditiously if you are trying to steal the spotlight from him. And it's just sort of like going down like a checklist and has like Ray-Bans on, you know? Like over yes. there. And they've like blown up. Please, can you also still have your wizard pipe with the bubbles? Because that is... Yes. What inspired? Yes. Now where's now where's Mr. Bubbles? Thank you. Like takes over a PA and <laughs> sucks on the pipe. Where does Jackson fit into this happy scene of touring around the world? Jackson, you could absolutely be an audience member in this if you don't want to be part of it. <laughs> no one has to do this. I think you would like to be part of it. Um, I think I don't think Jackson goes on like the whole world tour. I think Jackson mm. goes for the first leg. Many scenes of him carrying huge stacks of amps on his back and that kind of thing. You know, people will like build the whole stage and then it's like, oh, we actually needed it. You know, <laughs> we needed it 20 feet that way and he'll just pick up the whole thing and then walk it 20 feet and put it down. But uh, after that, Jackson is going to go back to chapter and uh, he's going to open a uh, a magical gymnasium and just trying to encourage wizards to uh, to work out oh. you know encourage mm-hmm. a little bit of a bit of you know get some get some fitness in there and you know cuz it's a, it's a it's a, a lifestyle of dusty old tomes and 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 that kind of thing and you know he opens a not a wizards only gym of course but mm-hmm. a, a a a magically accepting gym for for all people that sounds wonderful. Uh, the gym is called Gainesville. Yes. <laughs> Incredible. And what is Estelia doing? Is Estelia part of the tour? Estelia is 100% working on the set design, um, getting very creative with it. If you guys are up for it, I think at one point, um, a little way into the tour, she will gather everyone together, maybe borrow Jackson um, if he's gone back to, to start the gym, just temporarily and just be like, okay, 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 just like, one thing I have this idea for an amazing new set design but we are going to need a large number of snakes and a large number of carnivorous rabbits and she just like (laughs) slams down the plans to the test (laughs) centre like heist planning (laughs) Maddie Mm -hmm. can you please write very simply uh, an RPG called Wizard Heist, <laughs> <laughs> because I think that's the sequel. Oh yeah, and a prequel. I love yeah. Yeah, how we're yeah, manifesting yeah, yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this this show really sets up both the prequel yeah. and the sequel oh, very clearly. Oh, you've got to have like, both. Yeah. You know. <laughs> the, the spoons prequel, yeah. right? That's the spoons prequel. Trying yeah, to be yeah, stealing yeah, yeah, yeah. that. It's the spoons the spoon prequel. Just prequel. Yeah. Yeah. much like Lucas George, the author of War in the Stars. <laughs> <laughs> we started with episode four yes, right yeah. here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I shall leave that open for future possibilities. <laughs> um, but. Thank you so much for playing and thank you so much for listening. It's been a wonderful adventure with these definitely wizards. <laughs> definitely. Uh, yeah. Definitely. And I would like to ask each of you, please, to let me know where we can find you on the internet and if you have anything to plug, starting with Pip. Yes, hello. Um, I can be found at Pip underscore Gladwin on Twitter uh, and I can also be found doing stuff with uh, Realms of Peril and Glory podcast, uh, other stuff on Rusty Quill and uh, just, you know, generally mooching around on the internet talking about tabletop RPGs. Nice. And Shamini. 
I am on at S Bundell or, uh, at Twitter and um, you can regularly catch me playing adventures and talking about science uh, and being very, very nerdy with the RP geeks. Amazing. And Lori. Uh, you can find me at Lowry Tweets and also I produce Enthusiasm and I'm on some of those episodes as well. And Connie. Hey everyone, Connie, pronouns are they, he and she. You can find me on Twitter at by Connie Chong. That's B-Y-C-O-N-N-I-E-C-H-A-N-G. Outside of that, I am also the GM and creative producer for Trans Planar RPG, a D&D actual play. So follow us on Twitter for that. Please do. And you can find me on Twitter at Maddie underscore abstract, where there are links to all the things that I do. We hope to see you next time on Chapter Multiverse. But until then, from all of us here and the space between worlds, goodbye. 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 Thank you, Chapter. Yeah. Good night. See you next time. <laughs> bees. <laughs> oh, the bees. Chapter and Multiverse is a podcast distributed by Rusty Quill and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 International License. It is directed by Maddie Searle and produced by Natasha Johnston with executive producers Alexander J. Newell and April Sumner. The Eternal Tavern Keeper was played by Kareem Cronfley. This episode was edited by Lorian Davis, Tessa Vroom, Maddie Searle and Kathy Rinella with music by Nicova Teze. Thank you for listening.